So we've got to the end of the season and some of you are going to be putting your clubs away now for the winter, pulling the clubs out in spring. Now, if you want to get to the new season and not immediately have your handicap go up three shots, then it is best practice to carry on playing and certainly if nothing else, do some practice. In this video, I'm gonna give you six things you can do on the range that'll keep you going this winter so you come out playing better next year. So the first thing you wanna do when you get to the range before we even start hitting any balls is make sure we warm up. Nothing freaks me out more as a coach to see people get to the driving range, pull the driver out and immediately start doing long swings with the driver. In winter, because it's cold, our muscles and our joints are like more brittle and more likely to get injured. So you wanna at least take five minutes just to get moving you definitely want to start with the smallest club in the bag but actually the best thing you could do is get like a resistance band or a physio band which they give out for free and just sort of get your shoulders moving get your arms moving get your shoulders moving start to do some turns just to get your body loosened up the golf swing is quite an aggressive action once you get going so you don't want to jump into hitting full shots straight away once you've done a little bit of stretching you might then move into hitting a few sort of short chip shots just to get your eye in for the strike of the ball and just to get a feel for your forearms and hands and wrists all working together and then slowly working up to some longer shots. I would suggest that at least the first 20 of your balls you just put aside and say those are my warm-up shots, I start with my wedges, work up the bag and then once I've hit those 20 balls then I'm going to start working on something proper. Are you a subscriber to NCG Your Golf? If you're not then we would really like it if you would consider subscribing. We've got all sorts of new tips videos coming, some rules videos and obviously all the equipment content that you can expect from this channel. So if you don't subscribe already then please do and if you could please hit that like button and leave a comment then that would be great as well. So once I've warmed up the next thing I'm going to do in a practice session in winter is actually just set up a bit of a strike station. So I've got two head covers to work on my heel to toe strike and I've got a towel on the ground about four inches behind the ball to work on my ball before ground contact. So I like like to hit and encourage people to hit probably 20 or 25 balls in a strike station just because it gives you great feedback on what's going on so if I'm hitting it a bit healy I might hit this outside head cover if I'm in it a bit toey I'm gonna hit the inside one and if I'm just grounding my club a little bit early lowering the club too soon then I'm gonna hit the towel so doing some block practice spending 20 or 25 balls just sitting through this strike station just making sure that you're hitting the ball out the middle of the face you're striking them before before the ground and if you need to make any adaptations to your technique you're going to do it in this phase of the practice session you don't really want to worry about where the ball is going when you're doing this it's all just about am I making good contact with the ball because if you haven't got good contact then you we don't have anything else so we, we have to put striker on light as a premium so this is the perfect way to work on that in winter so once I've warmed up and once I've done my strike practice I then move away from block practice and more into random situational practice so I I'll always start with pitching distance control games. So just looking at the range, you wanna try and find three or four different flags and what you're gonna do is hit shots to one flag, to the next flag, to the next flag, all trying to get the right accuracy and the right distance. This is something that we do all the time on the course. I tend to think that we're gonna have between four to eight hit shots around. So this is a massive part of the game. So you really wanna focus on good strike, a good launch, and then pitching them at, at the appropriate distance to whichever flag you're aiming at. So I've got four different flags here, under 100 yards, where I'm going to continuously change target every shot because you don't want to spend too many times hitting to one flag because after two shots you should basically be good at it you want to keep varying your distance keep varying the swing keep varying the club and that's just going to help you have better touch when you get out on the course and you're going to feel much better from 50 yards doing this sort of practice than just hitting lots and lots of the same wedge shot don't mind it. pretty good pretty good. So the next game I'm going to play in my perfect winter practice session is a game I call deliberate miss. So using a seven iron or a mid iron, what you're going to do is you're going to pick a target down 
on the driving range and you're gonna say to yourself, right, I'm gonna hit five shots at that flag, but I can only miss on the right side of it or the left side of it. It doesn't really matter which side, you just have to pick one of them. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit the five shots, you're gonna hit it as close to the target as possible, but missing on the side you've chosen. And this is a great skill because when you go out on the golf course, there's often bunker right, out of bounds right, trouble left, where you have to hit a good shot, but knowing you can't miss in one direction. So by working on this on the range, you can sort of develop that same sort of skill of club face control, managing your swing, and making sure that you sort of manipulating the ball into good miss positions rather than standing there, knowing you need to hit a good shot, out of bounds left and then pulling it out of bounds left. As golfers, we have to have strategies for different situations on the course that we're faced with. So by working on these things on the range, you're gonna be more successful on the golf course. So I'm gonna aim straight down the line of distance markers on the range. And I'm just gonna hit a few shots. I've got a hard right to left wind here. So I'm just gonna try and hold these up, make sure every ball finishes close to the target, but not left of them. So I've, I've sort of I've flown, <laughs> I've flown too close to the sun there and I've overdrawn it and it's finished just left. So that's minus one point. So that'd be no good. So I now need to just acknowledge that I've hit that too far left. So I either need to aim further right or I need to do something in my swing to get the ball to start further right and finish further right. That's gone even further left. This is shocking. This is fine. This is real life. Perfect, that's minus two points. I'm not doing very well at my own game here. Right, this one is gonna go right if it's the last thing I do. Yeah. So you can sort of see here that because I've hit a couple left, my, I'm now bailing out miles right. And you can sort of see that I don't quite have sharp enough club face control in order to go out and be aggressive to flags and, and hit shots, good shots at green. So this is something that I need to work on in having a, a sort of a, a more surgically precise control of my club face so I can get the ball to finish in positions that I want it to. So that one's perfect. I've got a much better feel there. I've hit a couple way left, I've hit one miles right, and now I've got a bit more of a feel of where that good shot is. So that's two, two way left, two way right. Let's hit one more. See if I can finish on a net positive. Yeah, so not quite as good as the last one, but it's out on the right side of the target. It's not a million miles away. And actually, I think that's a good result. Three out of five is not too bad, but what we're looking for is to be consistently able to miss the ball on the right side of the flag. So that's gonna help you lower your scores when you get on the golf course. So the final thing I'm gonna work on in my perfect winter practice session is driver accuracy. So you read and hear a lot about people needing to hit it further and further and further, but actually when it comes down to it, playing in the UK, and certainly playing in the winter, we need to hit more fairways. It pays to be on the short grass, even if you have slightly further back, in my opinion. So there's no skill greater than needing to hit the driver straight. So what you're gonna do here is just pick out a fairway on the, out on the driving range. That's hopefully about 30 yards wide and just see how many balls you can hit in a row in between that fairway. You can either do how many can you hit in a row or you could choose three, five or 10 balls and see how many you can get. So I want a driving accuracy from my players that's higher than a tour player because tour players hit the balls so much much further than amateur golfers. You know, if they're 50 yards further down the hole, they can afford to be in the rough. But if we're gonna be further back and have longer clubs in, then we need to be on the short stuff. So I'm gonna pick out a fairway that's about 30 yards wide down the range somewhere. And I'm gonna try and hit a few as straight as I can to finish in that fairway. As a side note, it's also quite helpful if you just keep a record of if you miss, where you miss, because you might then be able to go back and feed back to your coach and say, look, I'm doing these games on the range and actually my miss is a bit left or my miss is a bit right can we have a look at my swing and that will really help guide them and help them help you because if they know what's happening in your practice and on the course then they can always make better suggestions so the fairway i've picked for this i'm going to hit three shots is between the 100 yard marker and the second yellow flag on the left that's quite a narrow fairway, but I always believe in trying to make practice harder than how you would play on the course. So picking a tight fairway is gonna go up, make you feel like when you're on the course that the fairways are enormous. So shot one, let's see if I can thread one down that fairway. That's perfect. Absolutely A1. One out of three. Shot two. Stay there. 
Ah! Just missed left. That was a real shame because that was uh, that was a really good golf shot. Okay, like last one. Let's finish in a positive. Spit wind across, so I might need to aim a bit further right. Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. So, two out of three is really good. I'm quite happy with that. I could keep going all the way to 10, but it would just turn into you watching me hitting balls for too long. But this is a great skill because it really helps you understand where the club face is, where the strike is. And if you've got the club face and the strike under control, then you will always drive the ball better and you will always score lower. So my final bit of advice would always be, if you can, get to a driving range with some sort of technology on there. So Trackman or Top Tracer range, because they have inbuilt games that just take the thought out of it and you can just go do some pitching games, do some iron games, do a driving accuracy test and then go. And the less thought you put into these things, generally the better. If you can just turn up, hit your balls, automatically do it correctly and then leave, then that is the perfect recipe for you getting better this winter. There's plenty of these Trackman and Top Tracer ranges about now, or even go indoors, because these indoor simulators are all run by launch monitors that have data. So the more you can go and use technology, then the more productive your practice sessions will be and then you're gonna hit spring having worked on your distance control, hitting the ball really straight, you've nailed your strike in your strike sessions, and you're just gonna be ready to hit the ground running when the new season comes. Right, that's it, that's my perfect winter practice session. If you go and give that a try and leave a comment, let me know how you find it. Hopefully it gives you a bit more structure to your practice and you'll find the whole thing a little bit more productive.